Hello, viewers, and welcome back to Ada Universe TV. Good morning, afternoon, and evening. Interesting video, my people. Very, very interesting. I beg, I want me to join me. Just watch this video. Don't skip anything. Watch them from the beginning to the ending. Listen to this hour. Okay? Listen to this man. Just listen. Watch this video. I don't want to say anything about this video. I want me to watch them. I beg, if you watch and finish, leave your comment for the comment station. Follow me, share this video. It's very, very important. You need to see this one. So I will see you again for my next video. Thank you, guys, and God bless. Bye. That are dear to your heart that you feel would give him an idea of what the ordinary Nigerians are thinking about our dear country and how we can take it forward. Um, please, first of all, let us thank him for being here. Let us give a wonderful round of applause to uh, His Excellency, Dati Baba Hamid. Well, I'm gonna set the day rolling by asking him, basically, to give us a brief introduction of himself. Okay, full introduction, like my read out my CV. Or... <laughs> as, as you wish. Give us enough information that you feel we need to know to, to aid us in, in our, our mission today. Okay. Well, that's because introductions can range from my name is, hi, my name is, to reading a full CV of yours. But I'll take the middle ground. Uh, I'm 49 years old now. Uh, in summary, let, let's start with education. Did my first degree in Unimed, 91. Second one there in Unimed, 95. Did MBA in Cardiff, 96. Um, went back, started PhD, 97. Went back to Nigeria, 99. Uh, went into procurement consultancy. I was the first proposer of what they call due process today. Uh, then I also went to real estate. Uh, in 2002, I, well, I finished my PhD in 2006. Then 2003, I was elected reps. 2007, I contested, but somehow didn't uh, get back to the reps. 2011, I was elected Senate, uh, into the Senate. I left in 2012 after the Court of Appeal ruled against me. Then uh, 2008, I began the Bayes University project. 2011, I got the license. And uh, all praise to Almighty Allah, it's been a success story till today. 2015, I did not contest uh, elections because I was uh, very busy at Bayes. Um, if I forget anything, ask me again, then I'll let you know. <laughs> this is what, what I can say about me. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. I've always been interested in politics. And then when I see people like you taking the bull by the horn and uh, going for elective posts in Nigeria, given how difficult or how challenging it's always been. I wanted to know what really motivated you to go for the presidential aspirants' elections you want to go. Office of the President is the only one that can give the powers and the authority to, to give us an idea of our dreams to solve the enormous problems that we have. So the main reason, before the motivation, the reason first, and it is more about reason than motivation. I genuinely believe we are a couple of years away from total breakdown of law and order. So, why is there any time to lose when there is no time to lose? Why will you want to hold another office, scheme to another office, while only that exalted office has the powers that you require? Define our problems 
our problems now are that of security. The moment you don't have security, you hardly have a country. And then lawlessness and utter disorder are the order of the day. You need to come on from the top and you need, to, you need to come in strong. That is as for reasons, as for motivation, I have been in the reps, I have been in the Senate. The next office to aspire to, logically, is presidency. In addition to the motivation, it is not about myself. Because so many have told me, look, if you want to go back to the Senate, it's as simple as ABC. If you want to be the governor, as simple as ABC, especially when you have such an infamous governor from your state. And I say you're getting it wrong. It's not about me getting to any office. It's about the problems on ground. It's about dear Nigeria. Ordinarily in Nigeria, the ranking is that the governor is higher than the senator. But in proper democracies, as you can see in the United States, senators are far higher than governors. But because Nigeria is highly, with due respect to all of us, a highly monetized society, it is the governors because of cash at hand and their control of delegates. So they made the whole of the country to think a governor is higher than a senator, irrespective of the fact that there is one governor in a state and three senators in a state. It doesn't matter. It's not the number. In the United States, there have been more senators who have contested and become presidents than governors. If my counting doesn't fail me. But you will agree with me that governors have dominated the Fourth Republic. Starting with Atiku, who was elected governor before he was uh, elevated to vice president. Uh, all the way fast forward 20, 2007, it was late Governor Eradua and, uh, Namad and uh, Good Luck Jonathan. Good Luck Jonathan became president, took another governor, Namadi Sambo, and uh, so on and so forth. Even 2015, it was yet another former governor and another former governor before. You know. So motivation is not about me. It's about what does Nigeria need. And the reason is that the enormity of challenges need the powers and authority of the most powerful office in the land. Right now you're talking of distrust among communities. You're talking about distrust among the ethnic groups in Nigeria. You're talking about distrust among the faiths in Nigeria, which should never, ever be the case. It has been proven times to that number, even now, that we in Nigeria can live peacefully, work harmoniously, and thrive as a nation. We're talking of a situation in which in broad daylight on a continental highway, daily, armed robbers operate for hours while the security agencies say they can't do anything about it. We're talking of a situation in which still uh, a large part of Nigeria is still under occupation by terrorists. We're talking of endless killings that are happening till today and not a single soul brought to book. Not a single person, hundreds Thousands, tens of thousands now, possibly hundreds of thousands killed. This is not acceptable. So it is that reason that we have enormous challenges. So you need enormous powers to solve those challenges. Of course, there's the economic perspective, but I believe they will be triggered by one or two other questions. And, I'll, uh, you know, they will be part of your answers. Yeah. Okay, thank you.